We're back with another episode of Milton Daily Homes, and we got five listings. So we still haven't seen that really hard bite with inventory where we're getting 10, 15, 20 a day. Uh, it's probably a little early for that. I would expect in the next probably 60 days, we would see a doubling of inventory compared to what's out there now. So if you're looking for something, it's not out there, do not be frustrated, it will come. Uh, this is a, a pretty normal time as there's less listings, the buyers have started to wait, wake up. So what that means is that you're still finding strong demand but limited supply. So as a seller, sometimes there's little holes in the market where you can attack them and say, look, I'm the only option. And you can either raise your price up or sometimes even lower your price and then get that huge demand coming through. So there's five listings today and I'm going to talk about some of the things that you see and sometimes you don't see in the listing wording. So number one on the list is 6020 Dairy. And the thing that you don't see with, uh, with this property is that it is actually on a parcel of tide land. So uh, nowhere in the listing do they mention that, but there's an extra fee of probably, I believe it's somewhere between 50 and $80 a month. What it includes is garbage removal and snow remo removal, which, which have to be privatized because the streets aren't wide enough for the town or because of visitor parking and common elements, they've had to create some kind of a, a condominium structure, but the house itself is not a condo. The house is a freehold, you own it, but you're attached to the road, you're attached to the visitor parking areas, which are considered common elements. So uh, I have a feeling it was economic why the builder chose to do that. A lot of the people who bought these, the original owners, were not told that there'd be an extra condo fee. The other thing that's not mentioned in here too is the, uh, the hot water tank is typically a rental item. Now what a lot of the new builders and a lot of the new phases have introduced is that the hot water tank is now connected to the furnace so now you're renting the whole thing and it's often a lot more than you know a twenty dollar a month that a hot water tank would cost so be careful with that that does happen here it's probably an extra 40 or 50 dollars there when you combine hundred dollars a month 120 dollars a month in actual cost to you that's like paying a mortgage so your mortgage for every ten thousand it costs you about 45 dollars so it's almost like if you were gonna pay full price for this one, it's gonna feel like you're paying uh, the payments on like a 579 instead of a 549. It doesn't sound like much, but it makes a big difference. It's the same reason why lower taxes will help affordability versus going out to Oshawa, some of the, the Durham region areas, or Hamilton where the taxes are much higher. You might say, well, it's only $30 a month, you will feel that from a carrying cost perspective. We call that cash flow. Now, what intrigued me about Cartwright is uh, is the lot size. So 134 foot deep, standard in this area is probably 80 to 85 feet. If you look at where it is, there's 1611 Cartwright right there. So it's long and narrow, it's perfect for horseshoes. I mean, some of these lots obviously have the pie shape, but it's still very, very deep. 1435 square feet is called a hexa model. And uh, the one thing about this one that you either love or you don't is that it has a, so it's got kitchen overlooking the family, but then it has a front room here that's disconnected from the rest of the home versus something like a croft side model where everything is, is sort of integrated kitchen overlooks family room and dining room in the same location. So it's a little less open concept and a lot of people struggle with what to do with this front room. If you have a dining room, uh, that's fine, but some people use it as an office. Uh, it's very open to the, the main area. You have a foyer, you have no walls here, the closet's further back. And so some people have a tough time arranging things there, but you've got, it looks like no carpet in the whole house. And for the extra money that somebody would spend to just finish off the ceiling in this basement, it would make a big difference. A half-eaten sandwich is far less valuable than a fully plated, beautiful sandwich with, you know, no one's touched it. So this is the same kind of thing as people look at this and say, it's half finished. I'm going to have to do this. How much is it going to cost? 
And in most cases, if a buyer sees a deficiency in a home, they're going to overestimate how much it's going to cost. This may cost you $3,000 to fix with the contractor. A buyer may say, wow, I'm going to have to spend five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000 to get it fixed. It happens all the time. A new roof may be $4,000. A buyer might think it's $10,000. What that means to a seller, the price goes down and down and down. The other thing I wanted to mention, Charlton Way and also the one on Cartwright we just talked about are starting to get to that age, about 15 years, where things start to break down roofs, mm -hmm. furnaces, air conditioners. So we saw in the comments it said new roof, and I look for that oftentimes in these listings in the east area. So in Beatty, in Clark, in Dempsey, these are the kind of things that the homes are getting past 15 years, you're going to have to watch for that stuff. So uh, listing agents, I think, are best served in these areas, especially with the agents that know the ages of these homes uh, to put in when things are actually replaced and finished up. Now, sometimes in a listing, you'll see, um, you know, TBD is the possession date. So that means to be determined or to be advised. This one on Stemmen is, uh, first of all, the price is good at six fifty zero zero zero, but the possession says April 13th, 2017. Now, the pros and cons of that, you're making it absolutely clear the day that you want to move, and it also means from a selling perspective, they probably found another house. So, as a buyer, you give them that price, you're probably going to have some leverage, depending on how many other offers are there. Uh, to maybe ask for something in return for giving that closing. Now, I can look at this and say, okay, well, they've definitely bought another house. Is that a good thing to communicate? There's two schools of thought. Either you keep your motivation hidden or you just put it out there. And, uh, and so when you keep it a little more hidden, I would rather say something like mid-April because then it's specific, but it's also general enough that it doesn't necessarily mean that you bought another home, just tossing it out there as a day. So I always like to be somewhere kind of in between general and specific, and uh, that seems to, uh, to work the best, at least from what I've seen in personal experience. So the last thing I wanna point out is as a consumer, what you're seeing in Milton Daily Homes is a direct feed from our MLS system. And, uh, and so you would see if photos are, are loaded, they show up on your link within a couple of minutes. Now what you don't see is the broker version. So you don't see the seller's name, although in most cases it's not that hard to find. But the other thing is we have a third paragraph. So you have client remarks here. Sharon, if you can zoom this in, client remarks, just in this part right here, and then you've got extras. Now, if we switch over here, and I don't want to show the seller's name or anything like that, but if, uh, if you look, we have a third category that we can see called brokerage remarks. And so this says offers to be reviewed Monday, January 23rd at 8 p.m. So now we have, as, as agents, we have an advantage of knowing when that's going to happen. You may see some agents that say that we're willing to entertain offers before there. We call those preemptive or bully offers. Uh, and then they've restated some of the, uh, the things here. But they might say things like we need X amount of notice to, uh, to confirm a showing or anything like that. So we can see some things that the general public really has no access to that can be an advantage for you. So what does that mean? You can get set up to receive daily listings of all the homes that match your criteria. We can do it not only in Milton, we can do Mississauga, we can do anywhere in Ontario. And, uh, and we can put some very specific things. If you only like homes with finished basements, if you only like two bedrooms, uh, two bedroom condos, for example, we can only set that up for you because as much as Milton Daily Homes, I believe, has some benefit to you as a consumer, there's some drawbacks. We only do the episodes Monday to Friday, and we do everything, and we only do it in Milton. So the next level to that is called Home Finder or Market Watch, where we would have a customized notification instantaneously for whatever you're looking for. So if you're interested in that, just go to MiltonMarketWatch.com. I'll have it presented down below. And uh, you can also find it up there or on this side of the website, depending on which device you're looking at. 
So there we go. That is the episode. Hope you enjoyed it. It's fun to get back into a flow and I uh, hope we see you tomorrow back here with more Milton Daily Homes.